Peter, thank you very much for your time here on ENCA. Just firstly, uh, your reaction, your initial reaction when you heard this judgment uh, by Judge uh, Paul Wallace, uh, a victory for media freedom? Masejo, good afternoon. Yes, absolutely. A, a massive victory for media freedom. Uh, you know, the judgment cannot be stronger. And I think the focus should be uh, at the moment on what the judge, the, the full court, I might add, uh, of the Peter Marisburg High Court found. It found that the attempts by the former president uh, to, first of all, privately prosecute the, the state advocate, Billy Downer, came down to an abusive process. It found that it was meritless and it was unsustainable. It similarly found that the, the attempt to muzzle Karen Morn uh, came down to an abusive process. It came down to a violation of the Constitution. So the, the, the judgment cannot be stronger. It cannot be more in support of the rule of law. It cannot be. It, it, it cannot come out stronger uh, in support of freedom of speech, the freedom of the media, the freedom of the public to receive information. I think this is an enormous victory for not only for freedom of speech and the freedom of the media, um, but also uh, uh, in, in upholding the rule of law. The judges were very clear that Mr. Zuma has pursued a Stalingrad st strategy uh, for 19 years. He's failed at every single turn um, and that the time has now come for him to stand trial. Mm. There's somewhere else in the judgment where I'd just like to read that sentence to you very quickly. It says the respondent uh, is interdicted and restrained from reinstituting uh, proceedings with or from taking any further steps pursuant to the private prosecution. So does this mean that uh, the former president cannot go and appeal the High Court's judgment? No, the, the, the president can appeal the judgment. He is just pro prohibited uh, from reinstituting any form of private prosecution uh, against Billy Downer and Karen Morn. Look, we've got, we've, we, we have no doubt that the president will, or the former president rather, will appeal this. Um, as he has done numerous occasions in the past, and he's lost it every single turn. Um, when he tried to remove Billy Downer earlier uh, by arguing that he does not have the basis uh, or the title to act as as public prosecutor, the state's prosecutor, uh, he went all the way to the Constitutional Court and lost. I think that uh, courts have now uh, started to see through this. They've now drawn a line in the sand. And I think it will be very uh, dangerous for Mr. Zuma to pursue this. Um, he has now been slapped with the heaviest possible cost order that he can be uh, uh, punished with. Um, and that should he try this again, I think the, 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 the punishment might even be heavier. And I also think that his legal team, led by Adil Dali and Paul, will, will have to take a long and hard look at themselves uh, and consider the type of legal advice they give their, give their client, Mr. Zuma, because he's lost at every single turn. And I think this judgment by a full court in Peter Maritzburg, it's very clear that it was frivolous, unsustainable, uh, it was an abusive process and cannot be uh, allowed to continue. Mm. Uh, now, Peter, something else uh, that, uh, you know, um, Advocate Billy Downer said in his submissions during this uh, entire uh, court proceeding was that he believes that uh, the former president was just using, misusing uh, uh, court proceedings to try and uh, evade from actually answering to very important questions that South Africans need answers to. Do you agree with that submission? Well, not only do I agree, the courts agree. The courts have now said that they agree with Billy, Billy Downer's submission. It's it's mm. it's now been codified in a judgment, a 53 or 58 page judgment, where they say they agree with Billy Downer's assertion that this was simply an attempt to prevent, uh, uh, by the respondent, Mr. Zuma, to prevent standing trial. Uh, the, the court uh, uh, elaborated on the Stalingrad tactics that was in 2011, 2007 rather, already declared to be the central pillar of, of Jacob Zuma's defense uh, by his then advocate Kemp, J. Kemp, um, and that they agree now with Billy Downer's argument. You know, so it, it, it doesn't matter whether I agree, the courts have now said that. Uh, mm. But incidentally, I absolutely do agree. There have been more than 20 court challenges over the past uh, decade or more where Mrs. Zuma has tried uh, all manner of legal trickery and tomfoolery to, uh, to stay out of court. And in fact, the court, the court says um, that, uh, uh, that, that Mr. Zuma has over the years often argued that his rights have been violated. Not mm. a single court has agreed with him. Not a single court. Not, uh, not the High Court. Not the Supreme Court of Appeal um, and, and, and not the Constitutional Court. So I think it's time for Mr. Zuma to now stand trial. And it's mm. also time, uh, I think, that, that people read the judgment and be very wary of statements being made in public uh, by Mr. Zuma and his foundation where they attack this court judgment without having read it. Um, mm. So we will hear in public now all manner of narratives being pushed, 
various lies being pushed by spokespeople, um, people who are uh, obviously supporting Mr. Zuma, but without having read the court judgment. Read the court judgment. It's very clear this was an abusive process. Mm. It was an unsustainable legal action by Mr. Zuma. It was an attack on, on media freedom. The High Court has now said uh, no further and no more uh, from Mr. Zuma. Mm. Uh, Peter, um, you know, there was also a submission uh, by the former president once again about uh, his medical records and uh, the fact that those were private, etc. But this, is, this was something that was dealt with. And I think the court in the judgment today uh, did speak about that. The bench did say, we don't understand why the former president is bringing up this issue of, the, of uh, uh, his medical records once again when it was dealt with already. Uh, w what do you think about that yes. particular uh, judgment by the court? Look, look, absolutely correct. It, it was dealt with by the High Court previously. It was also mm. dealt with by the Supreme Court of Appeal and subsequently dealt with by the Constitutional Court. Now, in this mm. instance, it was again uh, advanced by Mr. Zuma. But I have to say, reading the judgment, um, every single argument built or not really built even by Dalian Paul, who represented Jacob Zuma, fails and fails spectacularly. Um, the court criticizes, severely criticizes uh, uh, Jacob Zuma's legal team in saying that there were blanket denials of what of what uh, Morn and, and Downer argue, but there was no substance to any counter argument that was advanced or attempted to advance by Paulfu. So they, he was badly let down by his legal team. I would argue if you read this judgment, um, the, 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 the situation or the the anecdote that you refer to around the documents, uh, the, yeah. the, the medical records, I mean, that's been dealt with previously. Um, the court has held that there was nothing uh, untoward about uh, about Morn receiving those documents, the situation around uh, the timeline, uh, the way in which journalists work. But I think what is important in this judgment, as far as, as it relates to that matter, is it confirms the role that journalists play in society. Uh, mm -hmm. It confirms the right of the public uh, to receive information. It confirms the role of journalists uh, who work in the public interest to disseminate uh, uh, information that is in the public interest. And in this case, there's no doubt um, that the continued attempts by Zuma to remain uh, out of the dock is in the public interest, and we have an obligation. And the court says, in fact, journalists have a duty to share that information with the public. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an enormously important judgment. Mm, but also it speaks to some of what the court says in their judgment. And I mean, there's an undertone of the court believing the submission that actually the former president had, uh, for lack of a better term, sort of a, pers a personal vendetta against a journalist who's been covering yes. his uh, court case for about 19 years now and uh, basically wanting yes. to shut her up. That's exactly it. You know, I think I think one of the, the most important things that have come out of, out of this judgment, out of this whole process as well, is an acknowledgement by the courts that that that, that uh, Karen Morn, a, a female journalist, has been severely has been the, 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 the victim of severe harassment over the years, uh, that this forms of harassment you know, incited uh, by statements from people in the orbit of Mr. Zuma, uh, in the orbit of the Jacob Zuma Foundation, um, the, verbals, the verbal assaults that she has suffered has impaired her ability to do her work. And that is contrary to sex, Section 16 of the Constitution. It impairs the right of a journalist to do her work. And in a country where uh, uh, that suffers high levels of, of misogyny, high levels of violence against females, uh, high levels of, 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 of physical violence. It is absolutely unacceptable um, for individuals in powerful and influential positions such as the, the former president occupies um, to knowingly or unknowingly condone the types of harassment that Karen Warren has suffered. The, court's very clear, the court was very clear about that this in, uh, in this judgment um, and agreed with submissions by Morn that this um, attempts to, the, the, the private prosecution has led to attempts to muzzle her, to undermine mm -hmm. the freedom of speech, the freedom of the media, um, and it was an attack on her. Mm. Well, uh, Peter, my last question to you, what does this teach us, especially because the private, the application for private prosecution uh, in this particular case alone was not just against uh, Karen Morn and uh, advocate Billy Downer. There's still more that we need to hear from another court pertaining to the current president and his alleged role in this entire saga. Uh, what does it teach us, the judgment from today? What does it teach us about, uh, you know, what people think private prosecution means and that not a prosecute certificate? 
Masejo, excellent question. Look, first of all, I think I think what what it is, it, it might be an indicator of how the courts will in future uh, certainly approach frivolous and unsustainable court actions such as these. And, and I'd be very surprised if the High Court in Johannesburg finds any mm. differently to the High Court in Peter Maritzburg. This judgment has also said that private prosecutions does have a place in our legal architecture, in the yeah. in the in the criminal justice system. Um, uh, but that it can be abused and that the safeguards needs to be built into the system to ensure that a private prosecution um, is not abused or used to undermine a specific legal or and or private process. And that's that's exactly what happened in this instance. The, mm. the, the judgment is also very clear, Masejo, that um, that attempts by powerful figures to intimidate the media by instituting frivolous legal action like this, legal actions that really have no real legal basis or that is unsustainable and that clearly will fail, um, needs to be punished. A message needs to be sent to those who want to muzzle us in the media, who want to charge us uh, with, with, with frivolous claims uh, to try and muzzle us. So, so the message that the court sent uh, by, 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 um, by um, sanctioning the former president in the form of a, of a cost application, which really cannot be any worse than it is, is mm -hmm. significant. So let's see what happens in Johannesburg. I'd be very surprised if that frivolous uh, application stands. Um, mm -hmm. And I think a message was strongly sent by the courts today to both Mr. Zuma and his legal representatives that they will be hit in the pocket if they embark on such a fool's errand again. Well, hopefully we'll finally actually get uh, the Tales corruption case uh, underway. That trial has been touch and go uh, for over a decade now. And I think South Africans, uh, I don't speak for only you and I, Peter. I think we all want to know exactly what happened and if uh, money can be brought back to the state. Thank you very much for your time here on ENCA. That is uh, Peter Detroit. He is from News 24.